amen and amen. This next this four part series on I quit is I honestly believe my heart of hearts. The next thirty minutes is going to be life changing for some people, for many of you here. But I also know that in the next thirty minutes, those who are sitting here is going to hear these words and they're going to find all kind of excuses not to put God's word in action in their life. And everybody said, our today's sermon's topic is, I quit making excuses. All right, we can go home, we had church. I quit making excuses. Amen. Oh, I, you know, you ask most people, what do you want different about your life? You know what I'm saying? Every, everybody would have different things. You know, I want to lose weight and get in better shape. And, and you know, I wanna, I, I, maybe I want to get better at my finances or I want to have a closer relationship with God or I want my marriage to be better or, or I want all these things in my life. But how many of you know that as soon as you make a decision, the devil will give you all kinds of excuses why you shouldn't? I said, I'm talking to somebody today. We'll find ev- the enemy will give you every kind of excuses to remain just where you are. Statistics show this right here. That... Um, Forty percent of those that make um, New Year's resolutions by the end of January have gave up on it. By the middle of February, seventy percent has given up on it. Anybody ever gave up on a? Okay, at least I'm getting some hands up and some nods because, you know what, that means we're in an honest place today. I mean, we, we, on our own, we, we're, we're trying and we're trying and we're trying and we're trying and we fail. Anybody ever been there? And we fail. Amen? Let me tell you what the Bible says about this. Uh, in Luke, the 14th chapter, Jesus said this here, he's telling a story. He said, a certain man was preparing a great banquet, a big party, amen, and invited many guests. Let me say many, many guests. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to to those who had been invited. Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to what? They all alike began to do make excuses. Amen. And, and it's kind of ironic of some of the excuses that were made. Kind of lame, if you want to be honest with you. If you'll read through that, he says, one of them said, I just bought a field. And I need to go see it. Wait a minute. You bought a field without looking at it? Come on. Another one says, I just bought five yoke of oxen. I can't make it. I got to go try them out. I'm not a farmer, but how do you try out your oxen? Somebody say excuses. And one of them says, I just got married. I understand, brother. Can't make it. (laughs) And the enemy, he'll throw all those excuses at you. He'll, He'll throw those excuses, you know, I'm not good enough. Or right now, I got too much stress in my life. Help me, y'all. Or you know what? I'll do this later. I, I, I'll work on this later. I'm going to work on this a little at a time. Let me, let me fix some stuff in my life. Then maybe I can, somebody say, quit making excuses. Amen. In your worship guide you should have there in front of you, I want to ask you a question that I want you to be honest with yourself about today. What does God want to be different about your life? Can I ask you to write that down? 
Let me say this. If it's private, write private on there. But what does God want different about your life? Now listen, the one beside you don't write nothing down, I want you to look at them and say, whew, I didn't know I was sitting beside Jesus. <laughs> what does God want different about your life? Write that down on your paper. Why is it important to write it down? So you can see it with your own eyes. And right below that, is, I want you to answer this question. Why does God want this part of your life to be different? Because see, on our own will, we'll start something and we'll quit. Amen? There's power in connecting the why to the what. Why does God want me to lose weight and get in better shape? Because I don't look good in my fat jeans. That's not the answer. God wants you to lose weight and get in shape because you are the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So now, see, you got a why to my what. Amen? There's power in connecting the why to the what. You may be here today and you... God's laying on your heart to get out of debt. And why would God want you to get out of debt? Well, because debt's bad. Amen. And I want a new boat. <laughs> debt is bad and nothing wrong with a new boat. But that's not the why. The why God will want you to get out of debt is so that you could be a good steward of that little that he has entrusted you with. So that you can use that to empower the kingdom. Amen? Maybe God wants you to change your attitude. Oh, whew. get me, Lord. Easy. Maybe God wants you to change your attitude. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not a team player. Maybe I cause a lot of strife in my house and amongst my family. Well, why would God? Because then people would like me. That's not the why. The why is because he said you will be known by your fruits. And the fruit of the Spirit is peace, joy, love, happiness, long-suffering, patience. That's the why. So see, when we get the why with the what, now we have something that will drive us to fulfill what God has called us to do. Maybe here in, in your battling addictions. And maybe that's what's on your, your thing. Well, why would, God, why would God want me to be set free of my addiction? Well, so then I, then I won't be under any bondage. That's not the why. The why is God wants you to be here a long time with a clear, sober mind to glorify the kingdom of God. I know what I used to be. I ain't quite where I need to be. But I sure don't want the old man to resurrect. The why is, is because God wants to set you free. For the one the Son makes free is free indeed. Hallelujah. I love that. Come on. So if God wants something for your life, somebody said there's no more excuses. If God wants it for you, there's no excuse that can keep you away from it. Let me talk about some excuses in the Old Testament. When Moses was asked by God to go and, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, how many of you know that he had a bag full of excuses? A bag full. See, a lot of people don't like change. Come on, church, y'all help me. 
A lot of people don't like change. Can I tell you something? Change will happen whether you want it or not. If you don't believe me, go back and look at some of your pictures when you were 20. There's some changes that took place that you could not control. Change is going to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, change is going to happen. I mean, it's amazing to me. God told him to go let my people go, and he started making excuses right off the bat. And Moses said this in uh, Exodus 4 and verse 10. He says, Moses said to the Lord. Who said it? Moses. Moses. He said, Moses, go set my people free. He reached in his excuse bag. Some of you today, we're going we're gonna to sew that excuse bag up. He says, Oh, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Let me break that down into, in, into South Georgia modern technology, modern language for today. Lord, I'm like Pastor Mark. I can't even do redneck good. Let's alone get up and talk in front of a bunch of people. Me? Well, a lot of people don't know that Moses had a speech impediment. And he was told he had, a, he had an inability to do something. How many of you know, it, if God calls you to do something, your inabilities is not an excuse. He says, guess what? I can't do it, God. God said, let me tell you what God was saying. I know that's why I picked you. That, some of y'all get that when, I get, when you get home today. That's why I picked you. He said, I'll take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Watch me. Moses says, look, I can't even, I can't talk in front of people. I can't speak good. He was leaning to his own abilities. How many of you know that in your own abilities, all you're going to do is make a mess? In verse 11, I love this. The Lord said to him, he spoke to the Lord, now the Lord's speaking back. So some of y'all need to hear this today. Who gave man his mouth? The answer is the Lord. Who makes him deaf or mute? The answer is the Lord. Who gives him sight or makes him blind? The Lord. It is, is it not I, the Lord? And I love what he told Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he says, is anything too hard for me? Some of you in here, you know, maybe saying, you know, I need more patience with my family. I need more patience with the ones that I'm around or, and what have you. But you know what? That's kind of hard, man. I can, listen, I do good, and then they all come in and then, rah! Y'all help me. The, the God that created the fruits of the Spirit, don't you think He's able to give you the fruit of the Spirit of patience? And everybody said, maybe God's dealing with you to be submissive. Well, I can't do that submissive thing now. <laughs> Come on, especially the ladies. I can't be that submissive person. What about the God that created the fruit of the Spirit of submission? Don't you think he would empower you? Y'all with me today? Help me, Lord. Maybe God's dealing with you to quit being so negative. How many of you know it takes negative and positive to start a car? Amen? If all you have is negative, you don't run. If all you have is positive, you don't run. You need all the positive you can get because this world is going to give you all the negative in the world that you need. You don't need to add to it. The world's got enough negativity to give you as it is. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, you know, I've been around negativity so long that, that I can't, I don't know that I can ever overcome negativity. Well, can I tell you something? The God that of fruit of the Spirit that is giving you peace, joy, and love. 
He's able to empower you to walk out that fruit of that spirit. Then God speaks to Moses again in verse 12. He says, now go. Somebody say, now go. I will help you. I will help you speak and and will teach you what to say. I love this. Somebody say, now go. You notice, I, I love that. He didn't say, well, I'll fix all this for you, Moses, and then you can go. He didn't say that. He said, go. In other words, do what you can do. Look at your neighbor and say, do what you can do. Do what you can do. And it implies that, you know what, God's not going to lift a hand until you go. Till you make that step of faith, Peter, till you step out that boat, I can't keep you on that water. Some of you just need to take a faith step of, you know what, I want this different, I know God wants this different in my life, and I'm going to trust in Him. And everybody said, now go. In other words, stop making excuses for your inability. Stop making excuses. God wants you to eat better. Throw the Twinkies out your house. They cost too much. I can't throw them away. I just give them. I said, throw them away. Help me. Somebody in here that you're dealing with pornography. Turn the internet off of your house. Take all the data off your phone. Do what you can do. Amen? Maybe God's called some of you to start a ministry. Stop it making excuses. I remember when God called me to ministry. Y'all have no idea of how much I laughed about that. And I know exactly how Peter feels. I know how Moses felt when God said, everywhere I made an excuse, the God of this universe made a way. If we make it to August the 2nd, we'll be 19 years old. But it took somebody. It took making that step of faith. Going, God, they're not. Who's going to come? What? Me? Wait a minute. You must have forgot. And he reminded me in his word, I cast it as far as the east is from the west to never be brought up against you again. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And a lot of people over-spiritualize things. I'm going to talk to my spiritual people today. Well, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. He said, go! Well, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on, go! Get up! Put one foot in front of the other. Take a step of faith and say, you know what, God? I may not be what you had in mind, but I'll go. Jeremiah asked, who should I send? He said, pick me, I'll go. So you mean we're all supposed to run out and be missionaries? No. You might need to be a missionary right there in your own home. Whew. Pete said a mouthful. i never forget it. I've never been a morning person. Do not talk to me before I get that, at least that first cup. Don't talk to me at halfway. Wait till it's gone. Morning has never been my thing. And I remember the day God spoke to me about changing that. Working on that. Because I snap your head off in the morning. I'm just gonna be, can I be transparent? I would. I just, boy, I realize it, boy. Done got you. I didn't mean it. You know how you overcome that? Set your alarm early. Get up before everybody else gets up. Have your quiet time with God. Read your word while you drink your coffee. And ain't nobody but the Holy Spirit going to speak to you. 
And that changed a lot. Come on. God's dealing with you about an area of your life that you need to let him help you work on. Do what you can do now. Trust God to do what you cannot do. Amen? I said, now trust God in what you cannot do. So when you're not able to do what God's called you to do, now you have to trust and rely on him. That's why when he told him, he said, I will help you. I'll help you speak. I'll help you teach. I will help you. Somebody say he's our helper. He is our helper. Too often, we get me-centered things that we want to fix. People ask you, Pastor, I don't know what to do with my life. I just don't know what to do. My life is total chaos. Do what you know to do. Quit making excuses. Come on. Do what you know to do. When you know to do something, then you're to do that. When you get to a place you can't and don't know what to do, trust in Him. And the church said, He'll help you. That's like pedaling a bicycle. I, I raised, I, I taught both of my kids how to ride a bicycle and my grandson how to ride a bicycle. And there comes a time, you know, first they get their training wheels and they're able to ride the bicycle and they got something that picks them up and holds them. But then there comes a day, I never forget my grandson comes to me, Pop, Pop, take my training wheels off. I just raised them up. I said, let's try this first. He got that down pretty good. So then the day came, we had to take the training wheels off. Hmm. So okay, buddy, I got you. And I walk behind him. If he go to fall that way, I he go to fall, I catch him that way. I got you. Don't worry about it. Keep keep pedaling. Do what you ought to do. Keep pedaling. And guess what? I'll carry you until you can do it. And that's what God is saying today. You may not know how to do it. Keep doing what you know to do. And I'll carry you and I'll keep protecting you until you can do it. And everybody said, hmm. And that's how God works. I don't know about you, boy. Who, Lord, the things that he's brought me out of and through, and I know he's not done. Trust me, he's working on something right now that I thought was very insignificant until he started working on it. Then I realized it was a big problem. Y'all with me? I remember one time I was at a, a revival, probably about 20, 20 years ago and a little friend of mine that was an evangelist and he had told me we we're gonna have this revival so I go and I get there and I'm I'm you know fresh fresh out of being delivered <laughs> hadn't been saved all that long and there was this young guy that came in there and that reminded me of so much of me that I was attracted how many of you know that uh, like-minded people will attract to one another. And, and, and come to find out, he had a drug problem. And we was talking and, and sitting in the back, and, and that was unusual for me because I already knew God was up to something because I used to sit in the front. Well, this time I was sitting in the back, and, and, the, and the guy said, um, man, be praying for me. He said, I, I've been clean for three days now. I said, Absolutely. So I, I started to pray with the guy, and it was like God shut me up. Nope, be quiet. The little preacher went to preaching, and boy, and the Spirit of God got to moving, and service was almost over with, and they were down front. They were praying for people, and and he said, I think I'm going to go there. Will you go down there with me? I said, I'll go down there with you. And about that time, God says, now pray for me. We was started out the in the aisle, and God said, Pray for him right now. And I don't know where this come from, y'all. It scared me. I, I did what I know to do. 
And then how many of you know that God takes over when you don't know what to do? Man, all of a sudden, I grabbed this boy by the head, and I prayed over him and, and with that loud preacher's voice. You know, with that, Jesus, glory. You know, I mean, I mean, I had all the syllables down correct, you know, prayed over him. And, and, and listen, and, and, and it was crazy to me because it was probably about the third time in my entire life I've ever prayed for somebody. And when I prayed, I got loud to the point where I looked around and people were looking at me. I felt uncomfortable. But afterwards I said, now do you believe God can, can deliver you? I didn't tell him, I've just delivered myself. He said, well, absolutely. I said, now I'll ask you the real question. Do you believe God just delivered you? And he said, well, I hope so. Too many of us today live in that, I hope so. Got way too much praying and hoping instead of praying and believing. About 10 years later, I ran into him again at the store. Walked in and he said, hey, man, come here. I remember you. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what did I do to this guy? I don't, I don't oh, do I owe him money? Mm. He said, you remember at the, and he started bringing it back to my memory. I said, oh, yeah. He said, it's been 10 years clean. I said, awesome. I saw him about 15 years clean. And they, every time I see the guy, he's smiling. I just think God is able to do for you what you're not able to do for yourself. And I can stand here 25 years clean now and tell you, my God is good. He's faithful. He's faithful. Listen, if you won't give in, you got to do your part. Go do what you know to do. I know to stay away from the dope man. I never forget. I, I love it. People get delivered from drinking or whatever. They go into the bar to set everybody in the bar free. No, fool, you finna go get drunk. You need to stay up out of there. Y'all with me? <laughs> No, I, I know now that as soon as I see that, that one that I know that may cause me to stumble, I'm going to sell them Jesus before they ever have, a, ever have a chance to sell me anything else. Why? Because I know that I am a co-laborer with God. Y'all with me today? So now, I don't know how old, long young man's been clean, but I know that my God is faithful. When you can't do it, he'll do it for you. Do you believe that he's able to do it? Amen? When Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, he says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That scripture never made sense to me until I realized, when I realized that I'm weak, then he is my strength. When I feel like I'm going to stumble, he's my strength. Even when I, sometimes when I want to quit, throw the towel in and walk away, he is my strength. Amen? So I'm going to tell you something. Some people think being a Christian is being weak. I'd like to challenge most people to be a Christian for a week. What is that? What do you mean by that comment, Pastor? That's kind of a bold comment, isn't it? Absolutely it is. It's a very bold comment. Because that means you got to get along with people you don't even want to, you don't even like. You got to love on people that you, that's unlovable. You got to reach out and say, I'm sorry when you're not sorry. The church ain't saying nothing. It's when you got to walk with your head held high, your shoulders squared off, and a line drawn in the sand that says, You know what? Enough. Is enough. As for me and my house, I can't control your house. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. And the church said, amen. As for me and my house, because I know what I used to do. 
I know how easy it would be to go right back to where I came from. It wouldn't be hard at all. But I have a job to do. And that's quit making excuses. These next four weeks we're going to talk about some real serious stuff that we're going to quit. We're going to quit complaining. Quit comparing. Amen? But today we're going to quit making excuses. If God, if you'll get the why to connect to the what, there's power in the why. Why would God want my house be full of peace? So you can glorify his kingdom. So that you can live a happier life. So that you can live in the blessings that God calls you to. Why would God want you to be healed, whole, lacking of nothing, nothing broken, nothing missing? Because that is his perfect will for all of his children. That's the why. How do we do that? Glad you asked. We walk out and understand when we're weak, he is strong. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I want each person in this place. I know I don't. Maybe God's dealing with some of you in here today to just sell out to God. Totally. I don't care how long you've been going to church. I know a lot of, a lot of people that go to church, there is absolutely no evidence of Christ in their life when they leave. God's got me way out here this morning. And sometimes we're, we're, we come to that place, yeah, I want to be a, a better Christian. I want to have a closer relationship with Christ. I want to be more like Him. You know, I promise you, somebody in here wrote down that God wants you to read His Word for you this year. The devil give you all kinds of excuses why you can't get up early and do it. But why would God want you to? So you could be more like him. That's the why. Not what. You got to add the why to the what. So if you're here today, we're just going to, just out of an act of faith, randomly, you want a closer walk with Christ, jump to your feet. So that's me. That, I, I'm submitting to me. That's me today. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, that each and every person of the sound of my voice hear you hear their cries today. We're quitting our excuses today. We're casting our excuses aside. We're not looking at our circumstances. We're not looking left nor are we looking right. We're trusting in you. Right now we ask the why to put to our what. Father, we come before you humbly and we give you all praise and glory. Holy Spirit, we know you are our counselor, our teacher, our advocate, and that you are our comforter. We ask right now that you lead us, guide us, and direct us. Father, let your people as to what they wrote down today, be powered by the Holy Spirit for the why. And we give you the praise and the glory because we know that your grace is sufficient. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, and all of God's children said,